All right, next let's talk about binary trees and binary search trees in particular. This is a sample of what one might look like. So instead of having a next and a previous pointer pointing to the next and previous things in a list, a tree is, well, a tree structure. So the idea here is that every element instead has a left and a right child pointer. So we have the ability to work our way down through this tree, looking at the left and right children of each node as we work our way down. Now, if left and right are ordered, meaning that it, things that are less than the thing that I'm looking at go to the left and things that are greater than go to the right, then we call this a binary search tree because it is an ordered binary tree. And this is very useful for search, right? Now, less than and greater than doesn't mean that it has to be a number necessarily. It just means that we have to have some consistent way of saying, well, this value is greater than or less than this value. Maybe that's based on, you know, alphabetical sort of strings or something like that. It doesn't have to be a number necessarily. So axis in this case is log of n. Why is that? Well, if we have a perfectly balanced binary tree, you can see that as we work our way down, we're basically dividing our search space in half every time. So we start off with uh, half of the stuff on the left and half of the stuff on the right. As soon as we pick a direction there, because we know the thing we're looking for is either less than or greater than the thing at the top of the tree, we've instantly cut our search space in half. And as we work our way down to the next level, we do it again, right? So here we would say, okay, well, the thing I'm looking for is either less than or greater than this thing that I'm at. I'm gonna pick one direction. And now I've again cut my search space in half yet again. So we've gone from the entire search space to half of the search space, to half of half of the search space, and I could keep on going. That is a logarithmic relationship, which is why we say that axis is O of log n on average. However, there was a worst case scenario here that you need to know about as well. So if I were to insert things into a binary search tree in sorted order, this would degenerate to a linked list. And um, that's gonna be O of n, as you might recall. Think about it, right? If I like start with the number one, and I insert the number two, that's gonna to go to the right. And if I then insert the number three, that will go to the right again. The number four would go to the right again. Five would go to the right again. So if I'm inserting things in sorted order, I'm just gonna end up with a singly linked list. And that's not a particularly efficient structure for searching for things. So it's good to know that log of n represents the best case scenario or the average scenario is how we say it uh, in computer science world. But O of n is really the worst case scenario. So in practical terms, it's good to know that, right? Um, especially if you're dealing with sorted data from the get-go. So sometimes theory and reality are a little bit different, and it's good to speak to that. Insertions and deletions are also log of n, again, in the best case, and O of n in the worst case, because you have to do a search to find out how you're going to rearrange things, all right? So really no different there. So a, sometimes you'll see implementations of binary search trees where they are self-balancing. So there are algorithms out there that will rearrange the tree as you insert things into it automatically to try to keep it balanced. This is useful in situations where you're not doing a lot of inserts or maybe you just do the inserts up front, but what you're really doing quickly and at massive scale are those lookups later on. So if you really want to optimize for fast lookups, a self-balancing binary tree might be the way to go. So mostly this is used in cases where you need to do an in-order traversal of the stuff that you're putting in. So it is possible to write a pretty simple recursive algorithm that goes through everything in a binary search tree and prints them out in sorted order. You basically just work your way down all the way to the left and go up a step, go to the right, you know, and just recursively go back up and just go through and search through as you get things in sorted order. So um, this is not a coding interview class. We're talking about design interviews, but a very common coding question is, implement a binary search tree in order traversal. And that's something that's easily done using recursion. So if you want a little practice for your coding skills, that's a good one to try. And an incredibly useful and incredibly common data structure in the world of system design is the hash table. Why is that? It allows us to take a key that we're looking for that has some value, some data associated with it, and very quickly figure out where that data is stored. So in the case of a, a hash table, that's just a data structure sitting on one machine, we might have some sort of a hash function applied to our keys that maps those hash functions to a bucket of some sort. So we have some fixed number of buckets that we're storing stuff within, and our hash function allows you to very quickly through a single mathematical operation, map that key to which bucket that key's data is stored within. So in this particular example here, the key A is being mapped to bucket number one through that hash function, so is key C somehow. So that also maps to bucket one. You can have less buckets than keys 
In fact, usually you will. Uh, B might be mapped to the second one, and D might be mapped to the third one. So once we actually know what bucket we're in, we will search that bucket for the specific key that we're looking for and its value. So if it's more than one thing, we might have to do a little bit of a traversal to find it within that bucket. But the idea is that we split this up in such a way that these uh, individual buckets don't have a whole lot of data to go through to look, through, to look at. So they can be very, very efficient. Now, when you do have this case where more than one key points to the same bucket, we call that a hash collision. And in that case, you know, we have to have some sort of a strategy for how do I find multiple things within the same bucket. Often it will just be a linked list like you see here, but if we know that there's gonna be a lot of hash collisions, you might want something more efficient. For example, a binary search tree like we just talked about is another alternative. So big O notation, in this case, technically, inserts, lookups, and deletions are order of one because in the common average case, you apply your hash function to your key and you go directly to the bucket where that data is stored. So if you don't have any hash collisions, that truly is an order one operation. However, again, there's the worst case scenario to think about. So if I have everything mapping to the same bucket, if my, my hash function is absolutely terrible <laughs> and inefficient, and I've mapped things to a linked list, well, in the worst case, I might have O of N for a lookup instead, or an insert or a deletion, okay? So again, it's all in the implementation. Uh, tuning those hash functions and how big, how many buckets you have is pretty crucial to good performance. But why is this particularly important for system design? Well, it's also a useful tool for distributing lookups across a whole fleet of servers. So if I have a horizontally partitioned database or data store, like a NoSQL data store, I could just have a hash function that says, okay, you want this key? I'm gonna use that hash function to figure out which machine in my whole cluster that data is stored on. So the whole idea of a hash function can be used at two levels, right? So I might have one function that maps to which machine my data is stored on, and within that machine, there might be another hash table that points to where that data is actually stored within that machine. So extremely useful tool in the context of system design. So anytime you need fast lookups, which is usually the case, a hash table is a pretty good tool to have in your toolbox.